If you're a photographer or creative trying to make money, you need a niche. Today, we're learning how to pick a profitable niche so that you can make more money in your creative business. Niching down lets you become the authority in that area and lets you target the right clients with more money to spend. Let's get into it. Hey there, if you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm teaching you photography and how to start a creative business. I want to say a special hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. This video will teach you why a niche is important, how a niche will make you more money, how to find a niche in a profitable area, and finally, how to apply these principles in your own business. Throughout this video, I'll be referencing principles from this book, $100 Million Offers by Alex Hermosi. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend picking up a copy on Amazon. It's just 99 cents. All right, let's get into the video. Why is a niche important? A few reasons here. Number one, a niche will make you more trustworthy in the client's eyes. Two, you can charge more money if you niche down. And three, it lets you differentiate yourself in a crowded field. All right, so a niche will make you more trustworthy because you'll be able to become the authority figure in a certain area. My niche is food and beverage product photography. When a client goes to my website, that's all they see. They can easily visualize their beverage products in my photos. They'll automatically know what they're getting when they choose to work with me. This is great for me because my portfolio speaks for itself. I don't have to convince clients that I have the ability to take photos of their products. My niche down portfolio does the convincing for me. When I started out, my portfolio had all types of different photography. I had headshots, model photos outdoors, landscape photos, product photos, action photos, everything. If I reached out to a potential client, they won't be able to really see what I could offer their company. It looks like I'm spread thin and not really an expert in a single field. I chose to niche down, so in the client's eyes, I became an expert in a certain field. If all my clients are in the food and beverage space, I must be offering something that makes sense for this industry. The trust barrier has been lowered significantly, all because I niched down. Number two, I can charge more because I'm niched down. I'm a specialist. I only work with food and bev clients. If you're a specialist, people will expect you to charge more. Let's go through an example. If you want a killer cocktail, are you going to go to the neighborhood sports bar where they offer all types of foods, drinks, and beers? Or are you going to go to a cocktail bar that has a menu of just 10 cocktails? Obviously, the cocktail bar sounds better here. That's all because they're niched down. And you better bet that they're going to drain your wallet with their prices too. You can get a $6 gin tonic at that sports bar, but if you want a fancy old fashioned at that cocktail bar, you're going to be paying 20 bucks. As Alex Ramosi says, riches are in the niches. Number three, Niching down lets you differentiate yourself in a crowded field. The barrier to entry in photography or filmmaking has never been lower. Anyone with an iPhone has the ability to make great photos, but not everyone can be a food and beverage photographer that only does action shots. By niching down, you can separate yourself from the masses. Big companies have photographers reaching out to them all the time, but how many of these people are niched down to that specific industry? Your niche will set you apart from everyone else that's reaching out to those companies. At this point, I hope you're starting to realize how important having a niche is. Let's cover how to find a niche in a profitable area. I'll be heavily referencing the material in section two of $100 million offers right here. The perfect niche or market has four things. There's a pain point, there's purchasing power, they're easy to target, and they're growing. Number one, pain. The more pain there is, the more you'll be able to charge for the service. If someone has a huge problem and here you can solve that problem, they'll imagine their life without that pain. They're gonna be willing to pay a lot for that solution. If you can figure out the pain your prospect is feeling and walk them through how you're able to solve it, you'll be able to make a lot of money. Number two, purchasing power. You want to be targeting people that have money. If you target people with a pain you can fix, but no money, then you're not going to make much. If you're great at headshots, you're going to be able to make a lot more with lawyers than you would with struggling actors. Number three, easy to target. How are you finding the people and companies to reach out to? Are you looking up people on LinkedIn who are lawyers? Are you looking at coffee shops in your area? You need to get as specific as possible with this so you can easily target those clients. Number four, find a growing industry. A growing industry will be a huge bonus if you become the authority in that space early on. Growing markets tend to have more purchasing power, making this a powerful hack to charging more for your services. Getting all four of these is hard. You don't need all four. As long as your niche isn't in a bad shrinking market, you'll be able to make money with it. Just don't try to target the newspaper industry. <laughs> In this book, Alex mentions three markets that always exist, health, wealth, and relationships. Do you know why these exist? Let's go back to our first point, pain. If you lack any of these three, there's going to be a lot of pain associated with that. Therefore, there will always be room for people to come in and solve those problems. We now know what makes the perfect niche. 
Let's go through some examples in different fields and build out some profitable niches. But before we get into that, if you're getting any value so far, please drop a like below. I've also got a free course on this stuff on my website. I teach you how to get your first paying clients and picking the right niche is huge in that process. Check that out down below. I'll go through some different areas of photography here to help you discover how to niche down. Let's start with headshots and lifestyle photos. A lot of people start off here and it's a huge niche. So let's differentiate ourselves using the four principles we just learned. One, pain points. We just learned that health, wealth, and relationships all have pain points. For headshots, let's go with the relationships example. A lot of people that are lacking in relationships are in pain. So we're gonna start there. Online dating is becoming bigger and bigger and people need photos for their online profiles. That's where you come in as a headshot and lifestyle photographer. Online dating is a growing market. So that's already two things off our list. Next, we need to make sure our target audience has purchasing power and is easy to target. If you're gonna be running ads, you can target based on who's single on Facebook. So that makes this stuff really easy. Let's just make sure that the people we're targeting also have the purchasing power so you can make some money. Now, there's a lot of single people out there at every age, but do you think you should be targeting college kids or people well into their adult life? I don't know about you, but when I was in college, I was broke. Paying a photographer was at the very bottom of the totem pole of things I was gonna spend some money on. If you wanna target people with purchasing power, you need to be targeting the older crowd. Let's just say 35 and up, there's our niche. We went from a generic headshot photographer that will charge 100 bucks a session to a headshot photographer that specializes in online dating for people 35 and up. Now that you niche down, you'll be able to charge 1,000 bucks a session. We niche down by finding a pain point in the growing market and then finding people that are easy to target and also have purchasing power to pay you. Let's quickly go through one more example, the niche I'm in. I'm a food and beverage product photographer. We know the three biggest pain points are health, wealth, and relationships. I solve the wealth problem. My photos will make companies money when they run ads with them. I also target companies with purchasing power. I don't target local coffee shops or restaurants. I target companies that are selling online and have a footprint in brick and mortar stores. These companies are also easy to target because I'm able to filter companies based on their size and number of employees. Finally, while food and bev may not sound like a growing industry, there are a lot of sub niches that I tend to target, like the CBD industry. That niche is exploding right now. Well, there you have it. We learned why niches are important, how to pick a niche by choosing a market that has a pain point, purchasing power, is easy to target, and is growing. We went through a couple of examples that show my thinking when choosing a niche. Now it's your turn. I have a free course on getting your first paid clients. Check that out down below. Please don't just watch this video and click out of it and never think of it again. Do this exercise in your current area of photography or filmmaking or whatever creative space you're in. Putting these principles to use is how you learn and grow. Once you do pick a niche, stick with it for a while. As long as you follow the principles I outlined here, it should be a good niche. It might take a while for you to get the right offer down, they'll target the right people, but if you follow these principles and stick with it for long enough, I'm sure the niche you're in will work. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel and allows me to make more of these in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next one.